Hi, I'm Akil Vyas, board member of the AST. It's the 20th year anniversary for the Supporters Trust and we want to celebrate it. I joined the board in 2015, around 12 years into the Trust's existence. So I've done eight years on the board, but there have been others that have done so much more. So in the next few minutes, you'll hear from people past and present about the role of the Supporters Trust. Let's celebrate the 20 years. Enjoy the show. is Tim Payton and I'm a board member of the Arsenal Supporters Trust. One of the issues I lead on is campaigning and putting our voice across in the media. And there's so many campaigns we've worked on, many of them successful. Reducing ticket prices, the lower ticket price for away fans, getting the national minimum wage paid to everybody, the London living wage even paid to everybody at Arsenal, getting the use it or lose it on seats so more people are on grounds, fighting the Super League, standing up against racism and discrimination and campaigning for the government legislation in the online harms bill and the list goes on the AST is there for its members we represent the change that you want to happen in football so please join the AST and help us make a difference well we established the AST to give fans a voice basically to allow fans to be represented at the club well originally we formed it as a shareholder representative organization but subsequently we've changed now into a, a of organisation to give a voice to fans towards the executive, not just shareholders. The AST is, is what's now known as a registered society. It is one member, one vote. Uh, we produce annual accounts, as people will know, and we are uh, registered with the Financial Conduct Authority. So every member has a say in Arsenal? Every member has a say in Arsenal. So I'm Zach Wagman. I'm a board member of the Arsenal Supporters Trust, which I've been doing for about a year or so now and I'm particularly involved in a couple of areas. So I'm part of the Arsenal Advisory Board, where I represent younger fans on key issues affecting the fan base and affecting the club. I'm particularly engaged around women's football, where I wrote our submission to the government's review of women's football, and also engaging with the club on a number of operational and match day issues for the growing attendances and the growing support for our women's team. One of the first things that the, the trust was set up to do was, was to have greater oversight of what the club was doing financially. So right from the very start in 2003, we started to write quite basic reports on the finances to make it understandable for our members. A couple of sheets of, of, of A4, we had readily available accounts. So we sent those out on a regular basis and over time that's grown into quite a, quite a theme which many other people are following. But the annual general meeting was always a set piece for the, for the club when they had annual general meetings and we would use the financial analysis to, to ask some of the probing questions which we thought were important for members and the wider Arsenal community. Absolutely. I mean, the, it's one thing to watch the club on television. It's one thing to occasionally come over for games. But, you know, I understand more about corporate governance. I understand more about the finances of the club. I feel more of a part of the way that this club evolves. And, and over the past five years, it's never been a more important time to be able to have those kinds of connections. Well, first of all, particularly uh, you know, for a club like Arsenal at the moment, who don't have plurality of ownership anymore, I think it's more important than ever, to be honest, to have that supporter representation. But also, you know, people always say things like, it's not your money, why do you care? It is our money. It is our money, our membership money, our season ticket money. The whole reason brands like Adidas and Fly Emirates pay all of this money to partner with Arsenal is because we go out and buy the shirts and things like that. So it is our money. And so we should absolutely have a say 
in what happens with that money? By far our biggest campaign in recent years was fighting against the Super League. That threat to the very existence of football as we know it and the AST was there for our members and there to fight for English football. Working with supporter groups across the country, mobilising our own members, we ended up even with a meeting with the Prime Minister, with Keir Starmer, I think myself and Akil did 20 media interviews in one day for the Arsenal Supporters Trust and adding that pressure all together using the name of the AST, we were successful. We fought the Super League. It showed why fan power can make a difference and it shows why you should be a member of the Arsenal Supporters Trust. Well, I'm sure everyone's, everyone's talked about it. The watershed moment for, for the ownership and the Premier League future was the, the Super League debacle of April 2000. Uh, 21, and and at that stage, the government swung into the government swung into action. They promised uh, an independent regulator. It's been through Parliament, and that will be coming. It's something the supporters trust think is is very important for oversight of not only just Arsenal, the Premier League, and the whole sporting pyramid. Oh, the European Super League. Well, well, what can I say about that? It was a surreal week, and, and I actually remember it. it. It started on the Sunday. Arsenal playing at home. It was behind closed doors. And that's when my phone started ringing. And it just did not stop for about six days after that. The Super League was coming. We knew it was coming. We contacted Arsenal straight away. We got no, no response. That's, the silence was actually quite obvious, clear. Something was happening. The news started to break that night. Um, we did, I think, 20 to 30 to maybe even 40 media appearances. We were doing Talk Sport Daily. We were doing Sky, BBC Daily. We were working with other supporter clubs through the FSA. It, it was a real intense time. We, we've all got full-time jobs. and We essentially had to tell our employers there's something massive going on in football here. You might just need to give us a few days. And thankfully, we were all around a few days. But then it just, you know, we had we, we organised a virtual meeting very quickly when lots of members joined us at the time because we were scared. We were scared that this was actually going to ruin football, as other people have said. And then it kind of just fell over like a pack of cards. There was a lot of relationship building from from Arsenal, from football. Um, but yeah, it was just a really, really intense week. And I just, it's all a bit of a blur, but it feels like yesterday. It really does feel like yesterday. Supporters groups like the Arsenal Supporters uh, Trust, and congratulations on your 20th birthday, are so important for the game because without you and other supporters groups, the game wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be in a job. The pyramid would be dead. Because it was two years ago, just outside there, that your fans, you and your fans, were protesting before the Everton game about the European Super League, which would have killed English football, which would destroyed the pyramid, which would actually have unpicked a lot of the fabric of society. So it's, it's vital. You're, you're the early warning system, the first line of defence for you know, some of the charlatans who want to come in and ruin our game. One of the, the biggest things that AST also did was something called Fanshare. And this was a little bit before my time, but I was a member at the time. And it was essentially a scheme that helped fans like me own a very, very small share in Arsenal. Now, I couldn't afford the 20 to 30k to buy a share at Arsenal at that time. But I could afford to put a couple of hundred quid in, which then just gave me 0.000001% of Arsenal, which is very small, no voting rights, no, nothing like that. But it just gave me that share certificate that I own a little bit of my football club. And I know to many, many members that was, it just meant something. It was very token. But it meant that you were involved in your football club. And unfortunately, as, as Arsenal um, ownership model changed, compulsory purchases of shares, the fan share scheme also died. But for the while, it was probably one of the greatest schemes for supporters in the country. I was involved in Arsenal Supporters Trust because of a fan share. When I, um, when I saw that scheme, and I thought that was a brilliant thing I've ever had and uh, I couldn't wait to join and that was the beginning of my involvement with ASD. The big issue for Arsenal fans at the moment, it's a nice problem, it's the demand. If the team is so successful, everybody wants to watch them. But that brings problems with ticket touts, it means brings problems with access. So we've done a lot of work with the club. We persuaded them to introduce a policy where if you lose, leave your season ticket empty, 
you don't get it to use it the next year. That puts more tickets back in circulation. We've secured some cheaper ticket prices for younger fans, the future of Arsenal. We've, we've had Arsenal scrap the charges on the ticket exchange and the transfer so that people can recycle tickets and be encouraged to do so in a safe way. And the work will go on because we know that really matters for Arsenal fans. It's really important that those that live around here or those that are Arsenal fans can get to matches and it can be accessible for them. And we know that with the rising cost of tickets, it's pricing out a lot of local fans, a lot of younger fans who might be studying or in their first jobs and don't have the same disposable income as people that have been coming to Arsenal for many years. So it's so important that the AST has played a role with the club in ensuring that the next generation has access to tickets and can be a part of this club because over the time, they'll more than pay back in terms of money, but also support for the club as if they're involved from a young age. The women's game has been developing over many years and Arsenal as a club have always been advocates, whether it was under David Dean or now under Vinay Venkatesham. The AST have always been supporters and recently we've got a few board members and a few extra members involved to really help drive that agenda. You know, in the last couple of years we've seen such a huge growth of the women's game. I've been going to Arsenal Women for a number of years and it used to be a few hundred people standing in the cold at Boreham Wood and now we've been able to set out the Emirates Stadium multiple times and you know the AST can take all of his expertise and experience from the men's side of the game around governance, around competition reform and around the structure of the game onto the women's side and Arsenal are playing a really leading role in that and I've been engaged in a number of conversations with senior executives at Arsenal and in the women's game and trying to shape that. We can take our expertise on that governance side but also on the match day and the ticketing side as the women's game finds its feet and grows and we can be at the forefront of leading for positive change in the sport. I go to women's game as much as possible and uh, I'm so so happy it's grown so much. There is a kind of idea that the women's game will just follow the men's game it might not be appropriate for the women's game to do that. So for example, um, all of these burgeoning issues like kickoff times, like Sky have a Sunday evening kickoff time for the WSL. I understand why that works for TV, but it doesn't really work for match going fans. So all of these kind of burgeoning issues, and there are lots of, you know, the women's game is developing and it's developing very, very rapidly. And there is very much a call for kind of slowing down and actually saying, can we do this better? Can we do this in a way that works for fans more than the men's game has done? You're probably asking yourself, why should you join the AST? It, it's a community, uh, you know, it, simple as that. It gives you not only a voice, because we have surveys, we have uh, opinion polls, all that sort of stuff, but it gives you a place where hopefully you feel where you belong. It gives you a place where you can come to ask your questions. It, come, it gives you a place that you can come and talk to like-minded supporters like yourselves. And it hopefully just gives you somewhere where you can come where you just find out that little bit more. I remember when I was first getting into football, joined the AST, the little nuggets in kind of the financials and stuff like that were just gold because I wasn't smart enough to understand it myself. I had someone explain it to me, which was which was useful. And the events have just gone from here to there. We have done several events over the last kind of 20 years. I've been involved for about eight years, as mentioned in the intro, and even then we have done events from, um, you know, ex-Vice Chairman David Dean to uh, what you see here today, AST20. We've done Christmas events. We've done ex-players. We've had the likes of Ray Parler, Lee Dixon with us. Uh, we've had David Seaman recently virtually. And that's the other thing. We also do virtual events as well. So during COVID, another bit of a watershed moment for everyone, I guess. When the whole world went virtual, so did we. And we started to do over, um, started to do events, not just for our overseas members, for our domestic members too. But what we really learned was there's a real appetite from overseas members or members not in London to really get involved. So what we tend to do now is do a mixture between the two events, virtual and face-to-face, -face, because we still want to do face-to-face -face events. But we make sure we invest in making sure they're recorded at a good quality so that anyone overseas can then watch them um, at their leisure. So those events will continue. We'll look to get more and more guests. I mean, as I said, if you had told me a couple of years ago we'll have, a, we'll have an event tonight with Bakary Sanya, with Roman Kemp hosting, with, with, with Vinay, our CEO, speaking for a few minutes, it's Nigel Winterburn, a couple of other acts as well. I would have thought that nah, had no chance, but 
That is what the AST do. That is what the AST will continue to do. So please do join because you won't regret it. And don't just take my word for it. Here's a few members who are going to tell you why they think you should be a member of the Trust. The Arsenal Supporters Trust brings Arsenal fans together to try and make the club a better institution. We led the fight against the Super League, we led the fight against a pay-per-view charge of £15, ran the campaign where people donated to charity instead. We put on events pretty much every month and we've been doing this for years. We've got lots of members asking us saying that the virtual events are great and they feel like they're connected but they really want to do something in person. I'm always trying to uh, encourage fans to try and come to these events because this is such fun and we've had good laughs as well. It makes us feel like there's still a connection where there are individuals within the club who are willing to meet with us who care enough to give up their evening and listen to what we have to say and give their side of events as well. It gives you an insight into the into the club that you wouldn't see if you weren't an AST member. With Per Mertesacker, like, obviously he's a legend and we like hearing his stories from the past, but he runs Arsenal's academy and we're always keen to understand how Arsenal work, its governance, introduce members to people from the club so that they can have confidence in how the club is being run. I think I pass the ball to Santi quite often yeah. you know, because he used to get out of difficult situations, you know. Yeah. There's a lot to take from football. Yeah. It's, the, it's the best game with a lot of values and if you, if you treat them right, you know, they, they will treat you back in the right way. Yeah. So, and that's why I probably stay at Arsenal and be, be in this job, what I'm doing right now. Um, because someone saw something in me yeah. that I could hopefully transfer yeah. my skills and, into other people. If we can bring people like her, it's great, isn't it? I mean, you can, we can see behind me now, there's people taking pictures with him, getting things signed, and that's what it's all about. He's such a lovely guy, and he, the fact that he stayed, stay, he stayed all evening and was distributing the prizes as well, just shows the sort of character that he is. Members can get involved in, in kind of our surveys, can get involved in kind of all the kind of stuff we're working on. You know, the fan-led review at the moment is huge. But most importantly, they can come to these events, they can come to these events virtually, they can hear from speakers, and these are exclusive events. So these aren't, you know, uh, streamed on YouTube or Facebook or, or, or anywhere else. These are for members of the Arsenal Supporters Trust. So hopefully that's a good benefit for people. If you care about the club, if you want to see the club get stronger, off the field and on the field, we represent members. Membership has gone up a lot. It's just 20 pounds a year if you sign up at arsenaltrust.org and join us, help make a difference, help make Arsenal stronger. If you are not a member, it's well worth joining up. It's really like a refreshing sort of, sort of uh, thing to be involved in, great membership. Yeah, just really, really good fun. It gives you another opportunity to enjoy Arsenal. The AST is important to me because it's a chance to have influence. It's a chance to make your voice heard and to represent all of the wonderful Arsenal fans who are members. One is community and uh, it is like super highway to the club. You know, um, if there is any worry or anything, any issues, um, or I feel uncomfortable, I can always bring it up to them and they will look after um, whatever necessarily to do. It's important that fans join supporters groups because you're stronger together, inevitably in a collective, and not simply as Arsenal fans joining together, but also joining forces with other fans. And I think we've seen with this, well, you saw with the protest, that everyone realised why we needed a regulator to support the fans, give you constitutional powers, if the European Super League does come round again. And although the fans did brilliantly to see them off the first time, the regulator is still needed. So absolutely, the power of the fans, the power of the sort of constitutional weight behind a regulator is so important. It's important for lots of reasons. For me, the initial attraction was because it was all about custodianship and fans owning their club, which I still passionately believe in. We nearly got there, but not quite. But in addition to that, it's all about fans having a voice, that voice being heard, there being an environment where you can discuss your views with other like-minded people, but also contrasting with other people that, that you don't hang out with all the time. And I love that mix of the AST. It, it means the world to me. My association with this club lasts 35 seasons, 35 years, and, and it grows and grows with every year. But one of the things that's most important to me is keeping a close relationship with the club. 
and and being able to be a part of these kinds of events and you know I know that the ASC has evolved and it's grown and it's changed with the with the differing ownership of our club but to be able to come to events like this when I'm over keeps me connected to this club and that's the thing that's most important to me. I really like the way that the Arsenal Supporters Trust in particular has been able to be versatile in terms of responding to things that matter to fans. So that might be kickoff times, that might be broadcast times, that might be safe standing. Anything that comes up for fans, I don't see how else a club like Arsenal or any other football club in the Premier League really, really understands the depth of feeling around something like that without the fans. They might read about it, they might see it on social media, but to see that real kind of, this really matters at the moment for us. I don't see how else they find that because whatever you think about a board of directors, they don't have the people on the ground who tell you what really matters to supporters. Absolutely, it's really good to hear from ex-professionals, current professionals, obviously experts in the game. I remember a meeting where we had um, ex-physiotherapists here, which was just fascinating to hear how it works behind the scenes. And I think we as fans need to hear that sometimes. It's all very well watching the players on the pitch, but to hear what goes on behind the scenes and how that works is, is fantastic. Do it, 100% do it. You get so much out of it. Obviously you get out of it what you put into it, but by attending these meetings I have learned and met so many fantastic people. I'd encourage any Arsenal fan to join the AST. It's a great way to make a difference. You get to meet like-minded people, make new friends, answering surveys, attending events. There's lots of fun social things that we do as well. Plus you get to have your voice heard and have influence with the club. The Arsenal Supporters Trust is here to represent people like me, people like you, and everyone that wants to be a part of this. And, uh, and, and, and there are values to membership. And when you come over, you get to go to an event like this, and that's just a, that's an absolute bonus. Get your lifetime membership in. If you can possibly afford that, it's worth every penny. Just come along, see who's here, listen to all the different views, really support your club, understand what's going on behind the scenes, understand maybe the finances a bit more. There's lots of things that the AST bring to the table which aren't really necessarily things you read about every single day in the newspaper or whatever, or on social media. So it's there to take from it what you will, and everyone is truly lovely. Join the AST. Together we can do so much more, and there are so many issues coming up. The introduction of an independent football regulator, campaigning on ticket pricing and access, fighting the ticket touts, helping prevent racism and persuade the government to introduce stricter laws on the social media companies, getting everyone at Arsenal paid the London living wage, and so on. We need your voice. Please join the AST, support us to continue to represent Arsenal fans and make football a community for everyone. And there we have it. 20 years of the AST and hopefully another 20 and a lot more to come. Let's hope we can end the 20th year of the trust with a trophy. After all, it has been about 20 years since the Invincible, so we are long due a Premier League title. So here's hoping. Good luck to Mikel and the lads. And thank you so much for watching our documentary. Thank you for being a member whether you're domestic or overseas. Thank you to all our past board members for what you've done for the Trust. And thank you to all our current board members. And of course, thank you for Arsenal for supporting.